Well, a little intro. Uh, my name is Fernando Olivares, and uh, uh, just a little image description about myself. Uh, I am uh, wearing a black T-shirt, a uh, goatee, uh, and also um, what I do, I'm a disability uh, community advocate. I work at an independent living center. Um, I provide uh, transition services, and also I do diversions. So um, I help people getting out, um, getting out institutions. Uh, like nursing homes. And, and for me, um, uh, that's one of my passions working at this uh, center and also uh, do a lot of different things within the community, uh, the disability okay. community. Okay, let's go. All right, let's get to it. Ah, oh, man, I like that energy. <laughs> All right. So, man, how, how, just, you know, how did, tell me how did it go with you when, when you barely met at Roberts? Like, tell, tell me, okay. how did that day begin? Okay, go. Oh. Okay, um, I'm going to answer some uh, pre-written answers yeah. from Neil. I'm going to read them off. Um, I arrived in Berkeley on August 23rd to go to grad school at UC Berkeley. The following day, I rolled around the campus and found myself at UC Berkeley's main entrance. There, sitting in a motorized wheelchair with a tube in his mouth and legs outstretched was Ed Roberts would be considered the independent living movement's father. I rolled up to Ed and introduced myself. He said he'd heard about me and welcomed me to Berkeley. His first question was, why are you using that manual wheelchair? <laughs> Somewhat embarrassed, I mumbled that there was still a stigma associated with using a motorized wheelchair. Only very disabled people used them back east. Ed laughed, then proceeded to tell me about the Physically Disabled Students Program, PDSP. He, instruct me, he instructed me to go there and borrow an electric wheelchair. And that changed my whole life. A beautiful, uh, uh, that is incredible. Um, he making that recommendation and, and you, uh, yeah. you know, wanting to, yeah. to, to adapt, to, to make sure you get, you get accommodated to, to motorized wheelchairs. I, yeah. I, at my center, I, I provide a DME equipment. I love it. Oh man. So that's, that's an awesome story. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, you can take away my hat. You could take away my house, you could take away my car, but don't touch my wheelchair. Hey, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I love it. Love it. <laughs> okay, go. All right. What role did Ed play in your life and how did it influence you? Using a powered wheelchair is clearly one of the most important changing points in my life. The ability to move forward instead of kicking backward and seeing a beautiful world instead of struggling just to move was and still is a real eye opener. Ed also taught me that to live independently, you need to know how to depend on others. Being proud of oneself and one's community is critical to living independently. Wow. Wow, that, that was a... Yeah. Now, can you describe me his impression? Like, what, what, what I'm sorry, describe me your impression on, on Ed and, and what was his personality like? Because I... I just, uh, was, you know, I, I seen the video a while back and, and I, I didn't know he's, he was a, a rock star and he, he liked to party, you know, and I, I didn't see that side. Yeah. He liked baseball, you know, I, uh, so if you can l let me know a little bit more, uh, that would be cool to, to see that side because uh, Ed Roberts is one of my uh, great heroes and I want to see his his other side because I know his disability stuff, but uh, I would like to know more about his personal, if that's okay. Yeah. 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 Ed was a, indeed a happy guy. He always projected a love of life and then mm. have fun. Um, Ed knew how to work hard and play with even more enthusiastically. Mm. 
the day we met at UCB's campus, he invited me to his home to get high. Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, see, that's the part where, where I, you know, I don't know that much about that pers personal side of Ed, and, and that's awesome to, to see uh, the hidden scenes, you know, that we don't see. So thanks for sharing. <laughs> what, what year was this? Do you know? 74. 74. Oh, man, oh, man. Those, those are the days, huh? <laughs> Marriage, a boy. He he's. Did you know he married and they had a boy? Yeah, I I, I heard about that. That he has a, a son. Yeah. Good guy. Okay. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, some great, great things. Uh, what wisdom do you did Ed pass on to you? Um, quote, never make a major decision on the same day you hear the idea. Always sleep on it. Quite mm -hmm. often I hear him telling me that. Oh god. Woo. Love it. Love it. That's deep. <laughs> what What was Ed like as a young activist? Um, I never saw or envisioned Ed as a young activist. Ed was always a fiery, well-spoken guy lying almost entirely prone in a powered wheelchair with a tube in or near his mouth. Um, do you want me to read that too? Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, and although I see the disability movement beginning in New York with Disabled in Action led by Judy Human, I still see Ed as its father. The fo philosophy behind the movement comes from Ed. Nothing about us without us is the slogan most widely known and used. Ed full heartedly believed that everyone was worth and deserves to live their life their way. Mm -hmm. Oh man, beautiful, beautiful. Share a story, an antidote about Ed that gives us an idea of who he was. Yeah. Okay. In the summer of 1975, Ed held a reunion of the Quad Squad at Cowell Hospital on the UCB's campus. The quad squad was four people with spinal cord injuries who lived in the campus's hospitals as undergrads because they weren't allowed to live in the dorms. There are many reasons why living in a segregated environment is awful. However, hospitals do have private rooms. At the reunion, Ed encouraged us to find a partner and an empty space. Let's just say that party was fun and memorable. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that that's awesome. And I, those were the days. <laughs> oh man, oh man. What was the moment that you realized he was the game changer? Like when you I only I only you know what? I, I always felt that. Oh, from the moment I met him. Wow. Wow. Incredible. Incredible. That, that is a, a moment, you know, that, that you just know he, he was the guy, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Why did he, he choose to become an advocate? Do you know anything about that? Like how his, his start became to be where he, he was a, an advocate? I don't think people choose to become advocates. I believe it's in one's DNA. Yeah. 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 I, 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 
From what I hear about how he grew up, he was always an advocate, like his mother. Mm. How did you find or create a support system? Uh, well, how did uh, Ed find or create a support system within the disabled community? Ed's personality was his greatest attribute, enabling him to create his support system. People couldn't help but want to be part of his world by hearing him and being around him. His ability to combine hard work with having fun and making people feel good about themselves. Hmm. Hmm. That's so awesome. What should youth be advocating to carry on Ed's legacy? Healthcare for all and home and community based services, ABS, mm. are the areas that need the most vigorous advocacy. We can't be independent until we all have affordable access to the services we need to survive. 100%. I, I feel you there. Yeah. What would be Ed's dream of the disability community today? More than anyone else in the disability movement, Ed wanted us to feel good about ourselves and mm -hmm. proud of our community. His dream would be to see people with disabilities all over the world living whole and happy lives. Yeah. How about that? How about that? Yeah. And do you think, do you see that right now? Like, do you think we're in this moment of time? Do you, is, is, it, is it to the point? I know we need more. Oh, but. Mm -hmm. No. We are far. We are still far away. No, oh. so far away. In some ways, it's harder today. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, I, I yeah. Because of all the barriers we have, we wouldn't have a fact. Because of all the barriers we have. We wouldn't have a fact. We have a harder fact? No, we wouldn't have a fact. We wouldn't. We have to, we have a harder fight. We want all the things. We learned how to. Oh, because of all the barriers, we learned how to fight. Yeah. I, I can do it. I get the feeling that today we need to. No. We've. We've. We don't know how to fight. Yeah. Um, yeah. We did a big job. But I could take the berries because you could do that. We did a very good job with architectural barriers, and you can see that. Because you could because you could do architecture. Mm, because you can see architectural barriers. It's very, very visible. It's very visible. Mm. But now, but now, we can be guilty of all for good, for good. To get a trip, a trip, a trip. 
the the barriers you can't see yeah yeah the barriers you can't see are harder yeah. for example like getting attendance mm. and, and you mean a, like a like a uh, in-home care provider yeah 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 I, in my job i see that a lot that it is very hard especially right now yeah uh, i see that challenge getting uh you know, caretakers, it's, it's definitely yeah. a, a struggle. Yeah. But by the way, you know, get these. You call them By the way, we don't call them caretakers, we call them attendants. Oh, uh, thank you. I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah. I should have been personal care attendants, I believe, is what they're called. Am I right, Neil? He said they call them personal care attendants. Yeah. 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 Personal care attendance yeah. works. Yeah. Uh, uh. Well, we don't need somebody to take care of us. We don't need somebody to take care of us. We need somebody to help us. Help us. Do what we can. We need someone to help us do what we can't. Mm. Okay. Is that it? Is that it? I think that's it, Neil. 